So the good policeman does explain to us the specifics of the different types of witnesses and the fact that holy grail witnesses do exist. These are the damn good ones who can recollect uh, what they saw, even in trying circumstances. And you always look for these. He says they are not the most common people, but you can find them at the scene of an accident, typically. Um, this applies generally to witnessing any sort of event I would suspect. And can I tell you that I myself am one of these witnesses. I've actually been through this process with police a number of times. At one event I witnessed a car accident, uh, literally like the policeman said. Uh, I happened to be looking in the right direction at the, as the accident occurred. A teenager ran out in front of a motor car, severely injured the teenager and I immediately wondered what's gone wrong why did he run out in front of the car and then I realized it was dusk and the color of the car made it nearly invisible and the car headlights had not been on so that the teenager had simply hadn't seen the car coming close to himself because it was nearly invisible at that dusk time of day when the policeman arrived 15-20 minutes later, it was quite dark and the lights were all on, the street lights and the uh, overhead lights in the middle of the intersection were all on and the situation looked quite different and I reported my sighting to him of what actually happened and, and he said, oh that's ridiculous, this is a very well lit intersection, it couldn't possibly happen and I said to the policeman, you weren't here at the scene of the accident and I was, I literally saw it as it happened and the light level was significantly different and a factor in the teenager running out in front of the car. He wouldn't have done that otherwise if the headlights had been on the vehicle. So the driver was negligent, you see. So I prevailed upon the policeman to write that down and to my utter amazement he did. He did what I told him to do. Then I forgot about the incident and one year later an insurance investigator came to talk to me and asked me about 50 or 100 questions about it. Where were you standing? Where was the car? Where did you see the teenager? He drew maps and everything and he said this is going into a court case and it's going to reverse a verdict, a not guilty verdict. It's going to get somebody in trouble what you have told me because he said another witness from the other side of the intersection has said roughly the same thing as you. Significant details you have correlated for another witness sighting. So, I am one of those holy grail witnesses. Um, that gives me some authority. This is what the policeman's talking about. Not everyone is blindly hallucinating and walking around in a state of constant delusion, which is what the skeptics are always trying to um, tell us, uh, basically to insult us. Um, driving or something, but with respect to the actual crash, you're not a witness. You didn't see it. You heard a noise, and by the time you looked, the whole thing was over. But yet, your brain has modeled it, you've imagined it, and now you're representing your imagination as a fact. That's not an assumption I, as an investigator, get to make. By the way, note in here that I'm not impugning the honesty of this uh, pretend witness. They think they saw it, and it's very difficult to convince them that they didn't see what they actually didn't see. And in some of these cases, these people can spin extravagant tales that are positively not possible to have happened, the laws of physics will preclude it, and you could talk until you're blue in the face trying to convince them that they didn't see it, and they will not believe you. They will believe their imagination over what you can prove to a reasonable person they didn't see. To give you a rather obvious example, you can't find any shortage of people who will listen to Ian Juby wax retarded and think that he's talking smartly. That says nothing whatever about what Ian Juby knows. It says a lot about what his audience doesn't know. Similarly, if someone tells me that some unqualified people who are just self-proclaimed skeptics who organize conferences do an investigation, that is absolutely meaningless to me. You might as well say some homeless kid who dropped out of the third grade that I picked up off the street washed up and put a suit on, went and conducted a, a, an experiment in a physics lab and came up with a result telling me that the flying spaghetti monster is real. It sounds exactly the same to me. If the person doesn't know what they're doing, the conclusions are entirely suspect. Now, And I am a skilled reporter. I worked in a phone company where my job was reporting 
facts as leanly as possible to prevent front-loading other people's heads in finding faults. Um, give them the facts what you know to be true that they can verify and let them fix the fault their own way is often more efficient than trying to help them in advance because you're actually um, um, doing them a disservice by giving them suggestions in advance. So this is objectivity character extremes inside phone companies and it's something like the objectivity doctors try to use when they listen to patients describing symptoms, trying to figure out what's actually wrong with them, what's placebo, what's imagination, what's just plain complaining, uh, what's psychological, what's physical. Okay, Doctors do it too. So uh, There's also firemen and other services that do this objective reporting thing. You have to. Lives depend on it. Okay, Now, it's possible with objective reporting and the way some of these services work to be deeply disappointed. I had a, a robbery at my home, I had two robberies at my home, uh, armed robberies, uh, three men with balaclavas, 22 caliber automatic pistols because I was a jeweler once. And uh, three men, commandos, uh, commando style, did an assault on the house, beat my wife half to death, um, escaped with my truck carrying hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewellery, you see. Um, now, before that even left the yard, my yard, I was on the cell phone talk, calling the uh, 000 number, the emergency number, and I was saying, I've just had a robbery and I want police, 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 and an ambulance for my wife's wife who's laying in a pool of blood. And, and she said, well, how many people are doing this robbery? Like she was playing skeptic with me, this silly telephone operator. And I said... Uh, three men, uh, balaclavas, guns, they're, they're getting into my vehicle, they're stealing it right now. And because they were still in sight while I was on the phone calling the police, I had to scamper around behind the house because I didn't want any of them to turn and shoot me, you see. So, this was in 2006. Now, the operator started fencing with me saying, Now, wait a minute. First of all, you said it was three, and now you're saying it's four. Just how many people are robbing you right now? And, um, and I'm thinking, I actually told her, I don't care if it's three, four, or five, or six. They don't line up in a nice row against the brick wall to be counted while they're committing the armed robbery. Do send armed policemen and an ambulance for my blood-stained wife, please. That was um, a bit silly of the telephone operator, but that's a true story. It really happened. Um, we were, the police told us we had no hope of getting anything back. Don't, don't get your hopes up, you've lost all that jewellery, all that 10 years of work, etc, etc, etc. We forgot about it, we were deeply aggrieved. It was our house building money, it was 2002, and our house project was finished, basically, you see. And um, they also impounded my truck, which was recovered a short distance away. They used it to carry the jewellery and then took it somewhere else. And uh, they impounded my truck and charged me $400 to take it out of the police forensic evaluation yard where they dust it for fingerprints and stuff like that. I was very knocked with the police, but it turned out to be some kind of objectivity thing they were doing. I couldn't figure out how they could know fingerprints or DNA from mine. They didn't take my fingerprints, my DNA, so how could they know anything on the truck was different to me, the primary owner, operator, driver of the truck? Well, regardless of my opinion of the police service and how it operated, to my utter astonishment, eight years later, 2010, I got a phone call from some a policeman 300 miles away, and he said to me, do you remember that robbery you had many, many years ago, 2002? We've caught the men who did it with a DNA swab taken from your truck steering wheel. After eight years, we've caught them. How about that? So here's me being hypercritical and resentful toward the police for years and years and years while their procedure was at, silently working, waiting for them to be found somewhere else to get a DNA match. And I still don't know how they differentiate that DNA from my DNA, my wife's DNA, other people using the truck. I really don't know. But they do keep their forensic services uh, confidential. You're not allowed to talk to the confidential, to the uh, forensic people, they don't want their forensic procedures to become widely known. So that's very understandable. Just like the uh, policeman Justica mentions, you don't put your police ID badge up on screen. Okay, there are common sense things the police don't reveal. Okay, so 
I'd like to thank that policeman, Justy Carr, for doing a wonderful basic uh, scepticism uh, story, uh, description that every sceptic should be made to read or stop calling them sceptics. Either practice being a true sceptic like everybody else does or don't call yourself a sceptic anymore. He's done a wonderful job, that young policeman, Justy Carr. And can I just add that prior to the two uh, robberies I had, armed robberies, I mean with balaclavas and guns, uh, in 2002 and 2006, four years apart, one week before each robbery, my wife reported precognitive dreams indicating a robbery was imminent. Okay, happened twice. That's repeatable. That's good enough for me that ESP exists. Precognition is proven to me because I've had very dramatic evidence of precognitive dream warnings being carried out by real people. It's on police record, which, which is the uh, the most uh, realistic standard of reality that we have in any country. There's nothing better than police reports and court rulings, and there's plenty of them in my life. So if there's psychic phenomena mixed in with that, uh, I don't have a problem with it. Police help to confirm it. And the police even do confirm, because they can't lie in court and that sort of thing, that they can use evidence provided by uh, highly gifted psychic mediums, providing evidence to find bodies to score convictions. So uh, police are the best sceptics, as I said in my opening remarks about this young man, um, Dusty Carr, talking. Police make the best sceptics the most honest sceptics. Are the most practical sceptics and those kind of sceptics, open-minded sceptics that constantly examine their own assumptions um, provide the best standard of reality that we have. So I'll leave you with that and I'll thank uh, Justicar once more. Thank you very much Mr Policeman.